This storm system is far from over as we've got another severe weather outbreak possible Wednesday and then again Thursday as storms move from parts of the Midwest and Ohio Valley down to the Southeast Coast by the end of the week. I've got you covered on the latest severe weather details as well as information on an incoming cool down for this weekend. Everything you need to know weather-wise right here. One Nation Weather. Thanks again for being here with me at One Nation Weather. As always, many of the maps in this video are from Weatherbell. Free trial link to them are right down there in the description. Also, if you've not hit that subscribe button already and you're new to the channel, consider helping me get to my next goal of 4,000 subscribers for consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts, hit that button right below the video. Now let's get right into future radar, kind of get a look at what we've got going on here. We've got a storm system that's been making its way through the plains, the Midwest Ohio Valley bringing tornadoes to Oklahoma. Monday, we've had impacts in the Ohio Valley region for our Tuesday in the Great Lakes. Here we go towards Wednesday early morning, showers and storms straight from parts of New York, all the way back down there to parts of Arkansas and Louisiana. As we head to the afternoon, that's when things are going to get a little bit more organized, especially into the evening hours over this region. Not only the potential for heavy heavy rainfall, a lot of lightning, even some flooding potential, but also some scattered severe storms, maybe even some more numerous severe storms closer to the Ohio River Valley and surrounding areas in Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. Something we'll certainly have to track as we head through the late day and into the evening for our Wednesday, May 8, 2024, going into early Thursday, May 9th of 2024. Even some parts of the northern southeastern states there of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia getting the impacts, not only late Wednesday night going into early Thursday, but again with an afternoon round more than likely as we head towards late Thursday, May 9th here. You can see showers and storms likely along a boundary there that's continuing to sag southward from parts of eastern Texas where we might have a focal zone for severe storms all the way to the Carolinas, the Mid-Atlantic, on towards New York City. We've got a potential for some severe weather as we had late day Thursday. By the time we get towards Friday, May 10th, a lot of the upper level energy that's been supporting the severe weather this week now pushing offshore of the Carolinas. Still can't rule out some brief severe weather in the southeast on Friday. Overall, though, we're pretty much clearing on out for the weekend, despite a little bit of some rainfall that's going to be ongoing over parts of the Great Lakes and back towards maybe some storm coverage there in Texas and Oklahoma this weekend, but nothing too severe. Now, you know that I like to look at the jet stream. Let's look at the mid-level jet stream, about 15 to 20,000 feet above our heads. We've got this pretty significant piece of energy and at least a solid mid-level flow here from parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, all the way on up there to parts of Kentucky and Indiana as we head through our late Wednesday, May 8th, going into the wee morning hours here of Thursday, May 9th. That piece of energy, especially that little orange area where we've got 60 to 70 knot mid to upper level winds there in parts of Missouri, Illinois, that's what's going to be fueling our threat late Wednesday going into early Thursday for severe weather. We continue to see some strengthening mid to upper level flow in the jet stream over parts of the southeastern region of the United States for late Thursday. That's going to support our Thursday threat, and you can certainly see really how the atmospheric energy and the consistent flow from west to east up there in the atmosphere, that's going to be supporting our severe weather threat. Also closer to the surface, just, you know, several thousand feet above our heads, but not 20,000 feet up. We're going to have this southerly flow, and you can see that developing at least a little bit, you know, a modest to moderate low-level jet stream here from parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, all the way up towards parts of the Ohio River Valley there in western Kentucky as we head towards late Wednesday going into our early Thursday. So you can see the overlap of that mid to upper level piece of energy we looked at earlier flowing from west to east in a solid line over the area. We've got a little bit more of those southerly winds closer to the surface. Those will be a little bit stronger and push towards the southeast as we head towards Thursday. So if we can get some storms to fire off when these jet streams are overlapping both days, that's it's obviously going to support the severe weather threat, which I think even though the jet stream close, closer to the surface here is a little bit weaker late Wednesday, this moisture in the Ohio Valley and the combination of that in the front, that's really going to make Wednesday's threat a little bit more prominent for tornadoes. Speaking of the moisture dew points, obviously when you get 50s and 60s, that's when you're starting to get on up into the severe weather potential. We're going to have some dew points knocking on the door of the low to mid 70s. That is a really juicy air mass here. Moving along this warm front on up towards Missouri, southern Illinois, parts of southern Indiana, southern Ohio Wednesday late day. This is around 7, 8 o'clock in the evening here. You can see a cold front will be advancing out of the central plains here through eastern Texas. So all along, not only that warm front and right behind it, we'll have some of those supercells that could form for some severe weather. We'll also be watching back down there through Oklahoma and Texas for some storms in the eastern part of those states not only late Wednesday, but also into early Thursday, and then again Thursday afternoon again in southeast Texas, we'll be watching the storms Thursday, May 9th, around say 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the afternoon. Some big hail, some big winds, maybe some tornadoes developing out of the storms there. Of course, a lot of the southeast and mid-Atlantic coast of the United States looking out for that moisture and the associated severe weather potential on Thursday. Let's time out the severe weather as we head towards 
our Wednesday and Wednesday night here. We've looked at all the ingredients. Now we're looking at timing using the HRRR model overlaid with the Storm Prediction Center's Outlook, which goes all the way up to their level three of five. They're in that orange shade from Northeast Texas to parts of the Ohio Valley. Now during the morning, models are showing that we'll probably have some storms ongoing in parts of Tennessee, maybe some brief severe weather out of those, maybe the same going on there into some parts of Missouri. Now this model may not be 100% accurate, but what you can certainly see by the time we head towards say around 1 to 2 p.m. Central Time in the afternoon here on our Wednesday, we've already got some storms, especially in up there in Missouri, Southern Illinois, down into parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, maybe even some storms that could briefly be severe with wind and hail being the primary threats in North Georgia, Northern South Carolina, Western North Carolina. The main threats for severe weather already beginning to get going down here or up there, I should say, into parts of Missouri, Illinois, Western Kentucky. I think that's where some of these storms will already be producing some wind damage, some hail, especially with that Boeing segment possible near St. Louis if that were to set up. Obviously, again, this model may not be 100% accurate, but what you can definitely begin to notice as we head towards, say, around 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, while this is messy and, you know, the messy nature of these storms might actually prohibit severe weather to a degree as we're going to have a lot of rain moving over the same areas with time cooling the atmosphere, certainly looks like this whole region is going to be lit up with multiple rounds of storms capable of not only wind and hail, but also maybe a few stronger tornadoes down there in southern um, Illinois, southern Indiana, western Kentucky, and eastern Missouri as we head towards the late evening hours as well. On our Wednesday, notice how that cold front's going to spring to life with storms as far down as northern Texas, some of those producing some huge hail two to four inches in diameter during the late evening. Now, it's looking like formation of a couple of lines will be ongoing as we head through the evening. One of those might push towards Appalachia as early as midnight or just before, but it's certainly looking like the secondary line, which is at least going to be probably moving through Tennessee and Kentucky, maybe even as far back down as parts of southeastern Arkansas. This line will also be something to watch overnight Wednesday night going into Thursday morning. This is 3 a.m. time frame. Very heavy rainfall, multiple rounds of it, obviously obviously producing that flood threat as well. That's going to be something to keep an eye on. Now, my own W severe weather scale, a one on it is a low certainty, but with a few severe storms appearing possible. Two to a three, that's when you're starting to get into maybe an all-hazard severe weather threat. Four is scattered severe storms are what I'm expecting. Hatched area is likely from the Storm Prediction Center where significant severe weather may occur. Five is where I've got a signal for dangerous severe storms being expected with outbreak potential. Six and seven, I only issue those on big outbreak days. I'm certainly thinking we could begin to to shift towards an outbreak here for our Wednesday, May 8th of 2024 as multiple rounds of thunderstorms appear likely across the region Wednesday afternoon and night. Damaging winds might prove to be the prominent threat as we're going to have numerous cells with the capability of those even if the atmosphere cools down with multiple storms over the same areas. Evening tornado potential is most prominent here. I think it's going to happen during the mid to late afternoon, even into the evening here in eastern Missouri, southern Illinois, southwestern Indiana, and western Kentucky. That's where at least the main tornado threat will be. Surrounding areas, though, in the three, the four especially, need to keep a high alert for tornado potential, though, as well, Wednesday and into Wednesday night. Here we go towards our Thursday, May 9th of 2024. Broad thunderstorm development expected across the region here from the mid-Atlantic just south of New York City down to there to Georgia. I've got a level 3 of 7 for a potential all-hazard severe threat there late Thursday. Also got a 3 of 7 in East Texas all the way in over there to parts of Mississippi for some storms developing late day and into the evening. Again, wind and hail, the main threats out of these storms. We'll see if we can get any substantial tornado potential. That doesn't look extremely likely right now, though. Lingering severe weather potential will continue over parts of South Texas and maybe parts of Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas, even late Friday afternoon. Now, temperature anomalies. Let's shift gears and talk temperatures here. You can see as we head towards the Thursday time frame, heading towards the end of this week, we've got some 5 to 10 degree temperature departures here, really especially prominent over the Rockies, but through the Central Plains, and then prominent again over here, over parts of Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania at the same time, around 7, 8 o'clock in the evening Thursday. So a little bit cooler than average for our high temperatures Thursday afternoon across that area. Here we go as we head towards this weekend. Looking at this, this is around Sunday, May 12th in the early morning. So some of your morning lows are going to be a little bit chillier than they should be for this time of the year from Missouri and Wisconsin all the way to the mid-Atlantic coast. Some 10 to 15 degree departures there in the Ohio Valley temperature wise. Here we go towards our Monday, May 13th. Looking at these temperatures again, still kind of some cooler air in place. And you know what this is going to do? Not only is it going to mean we're going to get a little bit cooler than we've been, not excessively cool, but not only are we going to get a little bit cooler, we're also going to be looking at a decrease of your weather potential. That's certainly something that we need here over a lot of this region, as we're not going to have those big warm temperature anomalies and 
extremely summer-like temperatures to support those storms. Let's go day by day with those temperatures. Starting Wednesday, May 8th here, obviously a big severe weather day over on tap, probably from at least north of Texas all the way in over to the Ohio Valley. Starting the day in the 60s to even the low 70s. You see all these circles. You can't even read the numbers in this area I'm circling on the screen right now. You see those circles. Those are all record warm lows. So from Louisiana all the way up to Pennsylvania, we're looking at temperatures that are so warm that they're breaking records. It's never been this warm before to start the day since record keeping has begun on May 8th in the past. And you can see all the way as far north as Michigan, parts of New York, we're into the 50s to start the day or already starting in the 50s. By the afternoon, a lot of 70s and 80s across this region. You can see the area expected for severe weather Wednesday afternoon. Look at this mid and upper 80s down there in parts of Arkansas, western Tennessee. We'll try to see some at least mid 80s make it as far north as the Ohio River. Look at the 90s back down here in the southeast. Boxes are record warm highs in the afternoon. So Louisiana, Jackson, Mississippi, down there into central Florida around your favorite theme parks there in Orlando. Orlando. Obviously, that's something that we'll be watching because it's going to be well into the 90s. Make sure that you're drinking plenty of water if you're outside in places like that and visiting attractions Wednesday afternoon. Thursday, May 9th in the morning, more record warm lows here over the Carolinas, Georgia, maybe even parts of Florida. More record-breaking warm highs over a lot of the same region as we head towards the afternoon with plenty of 70s, 80s, and 90s to go around. Most of this area I'm circling in the 80s. Also got some upper 80s and low 90s down there in Arizona as well, by the way. Tamer up there, uh, some 70s up there in the northern plains Thursday afternoon. Even some upper 60s filling in in a lot of regions. Here we go as we head towards Friday, May 10th in the morning. Look at this little bit of that frost and freeze. You can see it on up there into parts of Wisconsin, northern Michigan. Protect those sensitive plants now that we're in the growing season. Here we go down here, parts of Texas all the way to the mid-Atlantic. We've got some 50s and 60s to start the day, especially south of the line. Friday afternoon, even though we're technically a little bit below average in a lot of these areas, you can see from Missouri, North Dakota, Wisconsin, all the way back down to Texas, a lot of 70s to go around some upper 60s as well. The further north you go Friday afternoon, look at this relief for all the areas that have been seeing upper 80s and low 90s in the southeast there from Louisiana all the way on up to Virginia. Friday afternoon, though, still poor Florida, right? Plenty of upper 90s. Saturday morning, record warm lows in central and southern Florida. It just seems like it just keeps getting hotter in a lot of areas here. And, you know, you can maybe contribute that to global warming if that's a, something that you believe in. Here we go towards Saturday, May 11th of 2024. We've got 40s and some 50s trying to get going here to start the day. You know, some lower 40s trying to get going in the Great Lakes and parts of the um, northeast. You can see as we head towards Saturday, May 11th in the afternoon. 80s rebounding here over the South Central Plains. Nothing substantial to support major severe weather. We're not going to see that on Sunday either as obviously you can see a little bit of southerly flow down here over the Southern Plains with a, some 50s, 60s hugging the Gulf Coast. Maybe some temperatures near 50 as far north as Minneapolis, Minnesota um, on our Sunday morning. But look at this. I mean, here we go towards Sunday in the afternoon. You know, it's in the low 80s at best in a lot of areas. So we're not looking at substantial warmth redeveloping here anytime soon. It is going to be at least a little bit warm um, for some areas especially the further north you go, because these are actually a little bit anomalously warm as we head towards early next week. That's it for this video. If you want to stick with me through all the severe weather ahead, hit that subscribe button for consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts. My thoughts and prayers go out to those who have been impacted by the recent tornadoes, obviously in Oklahoma, the Plains, all the way up to the Midwest. Uh, that's it for this video. Check out Weather Bell. Have a good one, everyone. See ya sometime soon this week. One Nation Weather.